Are you planning on launching your indie game on a crowdfunding platform like Indiegogo, Fig, or Kickstarter? One common question we get from the Ask Game Dev community is, do you have any tips for launching a successful Kickstarter campaign? Well, to answer this question, we sought out help from the experts. We reached out to indie game developers who have launched successful Kickstarter campaigns within the last year, and they delivered. In fact, we had such an overwhelming response that we couldn't fit everyone into only one video. So, welcome to a new Ask Game Dev series. We are Ask Game Dev, and, and these are Kickstarter tips from indie game developers who launch successful campaigns, part one. Welcome back. We make videos on how to elevate your game development and inspire others. If after watching this video you want to continue the game dev conversation, check the video description for a link to our Discord server. The devs on this list have amazing games and have cumulatively raised hundreds of thousands of dollars from thousands of backers. We've got links to each Kickstarter campaign in the description. Make sure to check them out. Let's begin. First on the list is The Warp Coin Catastrophe by Proximity Sound. Hey there, I'm Emmy. I am the creator of The Warp Coin Catastrophe, which is an original Game Boy game that was successfully kickstarted and funded in 2019. I have some tips or advice for trying to run a successful Kickstarter campaign. The first thing is to reach out to existing Kickstarter devs. See what they did, ask them questions. It's a little bit easier if you have back to their project. Um, so it's always nice to see some support from the community, but I had many people help me out and figure out what I should have done to get the best out of my project and get the reach that it needed. Next thing, don't be afraid of tears. Tears uh, can be scary the first time you look at them, like why am I actually charging this? Why are, uh, why are people gonna be paying for this? But some of the top tiers that I thought were a little bit uh, silly when first proposed by my team, uh, they actually ended up really helping the project out because those higher ones tend to be a little bit more profitable when you compare it to the actual cost of production. Finally, keep talking about your project. I still talk to people now that I am actively communicating with and have been part of the community uh, that had no idea about my project. Uh, so even if you think you've blasted it out and you're concerned about getting annoying people, don't keep producing, keep talking about it, keep uh, giving people updates about the process and how you made the game, uh, what you're wanting to do with it, what you're expecting out of it, uh, give them insights into it, and reach out to communities. I had a lot of uh, backers come from small niche communities, uh, newsletters, Facebook groups, uh, obviously other social media, but you'd be surprised at how many people uh, don't get to hear about your project and how excited people are to hear about it as well too once they actually find out. So keep talking, keep talking, keep talking, and even now, successfully ran a campaign and I'm talking about it. All the best, good luck. Justin Wack and the Big Time Hack by Warm Kitten. Hi there, I'm Pontus from Warm Kitten, and I'm here to tell you about what I wish that I knew before we had our first Kickstarter campaign, Justin Wack and the Big Time Hack. First of all, have a great demo. So this is good because that's the fun stuff, right? To actually working on the game. So make sure you have a kick-ass demo that you feel that as long as people play the demo, they will be wanting to support your campaign. It was good enough that one guy who worked on other two other good, big games in this genre actually saw it and said, man, this was a good demo. I'm going to push for this Twitter account and th that Twitter account to, to, to push it out there. And I'd say that's pretty much what made it our, our campaign. So when it comes to getting exposure, I remember the first thing that I that hit me when I looked at the, the name of the backers was like, these are people that, that uh, you know, we, we've met most of these people. There's a bunch of friends and family and uh, people, ga other game developers that uh, you might have talked to on exhibitions and stuff. People say that having a booth and stuff for your game isn't perhaps worth it. Well, maybe not for selling a game, but uh, when pushing a Kickstarter, it's super, super valuable because you make personal connections and personal connections is uh, super important. Uh, that's, uh, that's, you know, th th then people can actually see that, yeah, this, 
These people are, are actually, they're, they're passionate for real and they're legitimately excited about the game. You have to be careful not to like fatigue everyone with your game, so um, it's a fine line. But uh, I think that people accept that if you're having a Kickstarter campaign, they're fine with you doing, you know, pretty aggressive marketing. Twitter, Facebook groups and Discord. Those were the main three for us. I resisted for the longest to have a, a Discord, but that really worked out. Because in Discord, you can actually connect to people that want to help out real. You, you can get a, a few true fans there that, that actually want to help out and, uh, you know, beta test the game later and uh, really just feedback on, on stuff. And uh, I got great, uh, great, really good contributions there from people saying like I, I tried the demo and this is what I found. All was Legacy by Elden Pixels. Hello, I'm Michael Forslen and I'm the co-founder and level designer here at Elden Pixels, a small indie game studio located in Gothenburg, Sweden. We recently concluded a successful Kickstarter campaign for our game Alva's Legacy, which we call a modern retro game, which means it looks and plays like the games from the past, but we're using a modern approach to game design, making it appeal to a more broader audience. A good Kickstarter campaign always starts with your game. Do you know your audience? Do you know who you're making the game for? Do you know who's going to support you when you launch your Kickstarter campaign? Start by defining your target audience, and once you have that down, you can start working on your campaign. We spend a lot of time creating a good looking Kickstarter page that easily grabs the people's attention right from the start. We knew that good art always sells a video game, so besides a cool looking trailer, we had GIFs that each showed the unique key features of the game. We knew that if anyone from our core audience would visit the page, we'd immediately have them hooked. Followed by that, we had some general information about the game, and then at the end of the page, we had some call to action. In our case, it was of course to support us on Kickstarter, but also to follow us on social media. By knowing your audience and designing a good looking Kickstarter page that grabs the people's attention, you have a good chance of reaching your funding goal. Good luck! Letters by 5AM Games Hi! My name is Alexandra and I'm one of the three developers of Letters, a written adventure. Letters is a word puzzle game about friendship, growing up and the power of words, all set in well post letters and computer screens. We did a successful uh, Kickstarter campaign with our little game last fall and it was a challenging time for us with lots of ups and downs. So here are some tips from us to you if you want to do a Kickstarter campaign yourself. The first one is marketing is key. We didn't really have a following, but we still posted twice a day on our official game accounts everywhere and as well as on our personal ones. Then ask for help, ask everyone. People who've already done a Kickstarter, people who are running a campaign, friends, family, just Everyone you know, maybe they have some good advice or can run a cross-promotion with your campaign, support you financially or help you spread the world by telling their peers about your project. And don't hesitate to reach out to people, because most of the time they are happy to help. Then prepare to be nervous, it will be stressful. Try to keep an emotional distance, uh, and I know it's hard, and it's probably the thing we struggle most with. So if you can, work in a team and channel smartly so that not every one of you has to be online all the time. And remember, it's five times more work than you think now. So thanks again to everyone who supported us. Onsen Master by Waking Oni Hi, my name is Derek Fields, lead designer at Waking Oni and creator of Onsen Master. When creating a Kickstarter, one of the most important things is planning. Plan everything, every social media post, Kickstarter update, and public event for your campaign to reduce as many headaches and hurdles along the way. Get the most feature complete version of your game and start placing it in front of friends, family, and social media in the months leading up to your launch. That way, people are already talking about your project and they're just waiting on you to hit the launch button. 
Looking forward to hearing about what you have going on, and all the best from the Waking Oni team. And finally, Savior by Starsoft. Hi, my name is Dan Edelman, and I'm part of the Starsoft team that successfully kickstarted Savior, an open world action adventure game with a super fluid parkour traversal mechanic and punch out style melee combat. If I had to sum up what it takes to run a successful Kickstarter campaign in one word, it would be planning. Here's a rough timeline of what you should be doing leading up to your campaign. Three months before, get your page ready. That means the description of the game, all of the backer tiers, the trailer, stretch goals, even some update blog posts ready to go. Once the campaign hits, you may be too busy and frazzled to write them up, so do what you can now. I'd recommend avoiding doing physical rewards. They're a major hassle. But if you decide to include some, make sure you know all of the cost beforehand, including manufacturing, packaging, and shipping. Once you have that done, share the page with friends and other devs to get their feedback. You should also reach out to the staff at Kickstarter and get their feedback. They know what works and what doesn't, so make sure you take advantage of those insights. They want you to do well. See if there's anything they can do, like include you in their newsletter, or projects we love, or project of the day. They can also give you good feedback on the timing of that campaign. Things like how long it should last and when it should end. About a month before, put together a list of everyone you know with any kind of Twitter or Instagram following and ask them if they could talk about it when your campaign goes live. Don't underestimate the importance of the ending. Your campaign daily revenue will have a U-shaped curve. Big at the beginning, slow in the middle, big at the end. If you end at 3 a.m., you'll miss out on a lot of the end spikes, so don't do that. Launch day. Thank everyone who said they'd tweet about it and give them a link to your tweet so they can retweet it, or even better, write their own tweet about it. Congratulations, you've made it to the starting line. Good luck. That's it for now. Thank you again to every dev for participating in this video. Knowledge sharing is so impactful and so crucial for the success of the indie game dev community, and we can't thank you enough. Stay tuned for part two, where we feature even more developer stories. Are you crowdfunding your game? Let us know about your game in the comments. For more Ask Game Dev, check out this video on common solo game developer mistakes, or this playlist on how to develop your own game.